Guys, I'm Steve from Bullet Belt. We're from Wellington, New Zealand, and you are listening and watching Chana 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 Podcast. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a very special guest today all the way from New Zealand. Uh, we have Steve uh, Francis of Bullet Belt. Hi, friends. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, so how's the situation in uh, New Zealand? I, we, I know that the New Zealand is now COVID free. Yeah, well, we're COVID free and community spread. Mm. We have COVID um, at the border. So we have, when people land on their plane, they have a two week quarantine and, and, we, and everyone gets tested. So we have some um, people there that ha have the virus, but it's um, they're in they've been contained. So I think it's today we are 100 days free of community spread um, COVID, which is really awesome. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we're very lucky. We're very lucky to, I guess, to be in a small country down the bottom of the world. And we, we have very great leadership and um, we were very uh, proactive on jumping on top of the virus early and having a very strict lockdown. And the whole community of New Zealand supported it Mm. So we've managed to strangle it early. So uh, you guys actually were, was even able to play live, right? Uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, we played. Um, we played July fifth was our first show, and I mean, even in New Zealand last night, there was. I'm in Wellington, which is down the bottom of the North Island, and so and in Auckland, which is up the top of the North Island, there were two quite big metal shows on last night, and both both cities so there's shows happening um kind of more than ever at the moment because everyone's really excited to get out and see live music again so and we actually have 15 um shows coming up in the next few months around new zealand right so so steve uh, i first heard about bullet belt because uh, i i i saw bastardizer in australia 2016 and then you had a split with uh, Bastardizer. So that's how I got to know about your band. Uh, and then I had, uh, <laughs> I had Bastardizer on the show. And then uh, we were talking about this one, the split that you guys did. Yeah. yeah and then um, that's how I thought of uh, contacting you because uh, I felt I really uh, want to talk about Bullet Belt. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. So you saw Bastardizer in Australia. Yes, I went to Sydney in 2016 and then I saw them there and then uh, they also came here in 2018. Oh, wow. They did yeah. too. Yeah, I remember that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we, our little relationship with Bastardizer probably happened around 2017. We just kind of, I just kind of got to know Chris online because we have very similar tastes in music. Yeah. He likes some of the stuff like I like, like um, Fast Way and uh, the Motley Crue album with John Karobi. I know he's probably gone on about that to you. Yeah. <laughs> We're quite similar in those departments. So we got a relationship and then we, um, we, we've we played with them a couple of times in Australia. With um, We played with Toxic Holocaust in Sydney with um, and Bastardizer and we played with um, Midnight. Right. And around Australia, and I think Bastardizer came and played all of those shows with us. So we have a really um, nice, close relationship with those guys. They're awesome guys. Great band too. Yeah. So Steve, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and then when, when did you like first discovered the metal? So um, I come from, so I live in Wellington now, which is the capital of New Zealand. We have about 400 to 500,000 people. So it's not a big city. And um, an hour up, hour and a half up north is a kind of rural farm area called the Wairarapa. And that's where I come from. So I'm, I'm born and bred there in a small town. And um, luckily I had older brothers who, who had record collections. And they had, as well as some um, pop music, they also had a lot of great rock and, um, and a little bit of kind of early metal stuff. So... I started off listening to like Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and all those kind of classic bands. And I remember when I was 10, my brother brought home the cassette of the first Van Halen album, which is just called Van Halen. 
And I remember hearing that and I heard um, Running With The Devil followed by um, Eruption, which is the um, Eddie Van Halen um, guitar solo. And I remember that was very um, like a groundbreaking moment for me hearing this crazy electric guitar sound. And I was like, what the hell is this? It sounded like something, it sounded like a spaceship or something. And so, um, and then I kind of got really obsessed with Van Halen. And as you do when you're a young, young um, metalhead, you then start listening to a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier. You, go, you graduate to like Megadeth and Metallica. And then in the late 80s, um, death metal hit. So I really got obsessed with like, you know, a death and obituary and then black metal. Mm -hmm. And then you just, you just keep expanding. So um, I was really lucky that I had an older brother with a great record collection. And I also got really influenced by, um, he used to watch a lot of horror movies. And I, I remember seeing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I was really young. Like my parents were out of town. Otherwise, there's no way I would have been allowed to watch it. <laughs> My brother had some friends over and I remember watching Evil Dead, the first Evil Dead movie when I was 10. And I was just like, fuck, what is this? So that really kind of set me on the path, I guess, of, of an obsession with rock and heavy metal and horror movies and all the great stuff that goes along with it. <laughs> so uh, how, how did that uh, be being a fan? And then how, when did you like wanted to like, write your own music or you want to perform uh, when that idea came? Um, I guess usual story, group, group of friends in a small town, um, probably too much time on our hands getting up to mischief and, and we, and the, the group of metal heads in the town in a small town, there's, there's weren't many of us. So particularly at my high school, which probably had about 500 students, um, all the, the rock and metal heads kind of gravitated to each other. So we, we have our little group at school and then someone has a guitar and then someone has a bass and so, well, we need a drummer. So I kind of got interested and, and I've um, got myself a, a very basic kit and we start playing together. We're absolutely horrible, absolutely terrible, but we just, you know, it just starts there and, and we just get a little bit better at our instruments. My first band was called carnage with the k and that was um about 1990 we kicked off so i would have been about 18 and we we started off it was kind of thrash era so we were trying to emulate like our heroes like testament mm. and creator and all these bands tr trying to sound like them but not even getting close <laughs> and then um we kind of got more influenced by death metal by the end of it we were sounding okay so that band existed for about three years and um, for our last ever shows actually were um, supporting Carcass, who toured New Zealand on their Heartwork tour in 1993. And we were lucky to kind of blag ourselves onto that bill. And we got to open a couple of shows for Carcass. Right. And um, a little interesting side note from that band, Carnage, um, from the small town, is, um, the guitarist from that band, he, he, he's Sam Topman. So he went on to and to form Dragon Force. I don't know if you're aware of Dragon Force. Yes. Like, yes. I've seen that. Like, yeah. So, so from Carnage, we then fall, uh, it kind of fell apart and we started to get a bit more interested in black metal. So this was like second wave black metal had kind of hit like Emperor and Burzum and all these bands. So we um, formed um, Demoniac, which was a, a black metal band. And um, that probably existed for three or four years and, and did some good stuff. And then um, Sam and Lindsay from Demo Demoniac moved to the UK from New Zealand and kept Demoniac going for a little bit longer. Mm. And then Demoniac morphed into Dragon Force. Uh, meanwhile, myself back in New Zealand, I kind of went away from playing drums for maybe a decade. Still very obsessed with heavy metal. So I was still going to shows. I was spending all of my money on buying records and cassettes <laughs> and CDs as we do. And then um, I guess late to maybe 2008, I got very interested again in playing drums. So I bought myself a kit again and, and, um, and that's where bullet belt started. <laughs> so uh, 
yeah you you posted this i saw in facebook this uh, old K- krang article about you know there's a review of uh, slayer show no mercy and <laughs> you saw that post that uh, there was an old review of like slayer show no mercy oh yes yes that was hilarious <laughs> well, well there's a, there's actually this really famous um there's this really famous review there was a magazine in the uk called metal forces in the 80s and hellhammer which obviously um, morphed into Celtic Frost a little bit further down. But they sent their demo into Metal Forces and it gave it a zero and said it was the worst thing ever made in the history of music and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, look look who's laughing now. Hellhammer's a hugely influential band. So what a Kerrang! and Metal Forces now, anyway. <laughs> but the funny thing is the, now, for example, people are, like, reluctant to, uh, like, criticize or you know review like slayer or anybody right they they're not even doing it anymore right <laughs> yeah 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 it's fu- it's funny eh? Look, i i guess when you're young and impressionable and you're getting into music and i guess back then as you know cuz you probably around my age yeah. when we first got into metal we didn't have access to the internet so we were, we were just relying on i don't know what things were like for you um where you are but we didn't get many magazines and we just yeah. had to rely on. So we would only read a few um, reviews or articles and we kind of would take everything very literally, but, and it would, it would have a big impression on us. Whereas now where everything's so readily available, I think we're a little bit more educated and, and, and we can make our own decisions about um, what's good and what's not. Cause after all, let's face it, a review is just one person's opinion, right? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me uh, the, about Bullet Belt, uh, forming Bullet Belt. So, um, I, I knew, I knew, um, I, so I live in a suburb in Wellington called Karori, and it's a reasonably big suburb. So I knew this other guy called Ross, and I knew that he lived in Karori. He was actually a drummer, but I knew he had a guitar and a guitar amp. So I just texted him, I was like, hey man, do you want to, do you want to play, jam, like, just me and him. So we just, so he said, yeah, sure. So he was pretty basic guitar skills and, and I hadn't played drums for a decade. So I was pretty rusty too. So it was more just like have some fun Mm. and someone to play with. So we started um, like playing just in my lounge, which um, luckily my wife and my family were okay about for a little bit. And, and I had an electronic kit as well. So luckily we couldn't annoy the neighbors too much. So we, could keep the volume down. And then we got another guy and it just kind of grew from there. So we got another guy in before we knew we were a three piece. And then it went from, well, let's play a show. Why not? And we're like, okay. So we jumped on a show and played and it went really well. And then we're like, well, let's play another show. So then the band starts and it's very small and it just starts to grow and grow and grow. And um, I guess within two or three years, we were getting a little bit more serious about it. And we'd, we we recorded our first album down in the cold of the grave, which was mm. our first full length. That was 2013. Um, and then um, lot um, quite a few lineup changes in Bullet Belt over the years. And I guess a lot of that is due to um, you know being being a metal band in, in a place of only 400,000 people. There's only so many people who were, who I guess are committed and motivated to come along for the ride and understand that we're, we were now attempting to be more than just a band that practices in my lounge once a week. We're actually trying to take it a little bit further. So, so the journey of Bullet Belt, um, having members come and go uh, has been for us about, I guess, always trying to, um, always trying to better ourselves and do more and, and, and not just settle for just being okay and mediocre and trying to get out there. And for some people, that commitment has proven to be too much. So they've decided, hey, you know, we don't want to do this. But luckily, um, Ross and I kind of drove it for 10 years. And and I think the key to having a successful band is having at least two people Mm. who are really doing all the work and driving. If you only have one person, it can get pretty tiresome having to do everything. So we we recorded um, three albums with Ross. And then a year ago, Ross t- decided that he wanted to go and do some other things. So he stepped out. So now we have a, 
a new lineup, obviously, and we recorded our new album Warlords um, in October last year, and it's um, it's just come out. So it's yeah. been a it's been a roller coaster ride. Uh, we've had lots of great adventures. We've uh, managed to tour through Australia numerous times. Um, a lot of really cool shows around New Zealand. We really try and go to take our shows to smaller towns as well. Whereas in New Zealand, um, most metal bands will just play the big cities. So we're really attempting to take the metal to the masses and mm. take it to some smaller towns. Um, and we've toured Japan and we're actually just plotting to tour Europe before COVID um, went and kind of ruined, ruined it for everyone. <laughs> so we're just now focused on conquering New Zealand again and um, taking, so like I said, 15 shows coming up in the next, next week while, which is a big tour in New Zealand for a metal band. Right. <clears throat> so um, you also had, uh, you had a female vocalist, right? Jolene Tempest uh, in a couple of yep. your albums, right? Um, it's uh, how is it like having a female vocalist? And uh, I mean, because I think, most of your videos that is available on like in YouTube is what she did, right? You did with uh, Jolene, right? Yeah, I think we've done, there's two videos on there. There's Sniper and, oh no, three. Sniper, um, Deathgasm and Nine Centuries. So she, she joined um, just after the recording of our first album. She actually d does some backing vocals on the first album. Just right. as, she was just a friend of mine who I knew she was a tattooist in town so I kind of knew her from that side of things and um and our first vocalist Fergus left and then Jolene came on board and yeah look it was fine she was just we just treated her like one of the guys like just one of the band and obviously there's differences in having a, a female in the band um so it all it all went along it, it I guess it, it didn't it kind of fell to pieces a little bit at the end um without going into too much drama and sort of detail but um we we got another guy in on guitar and then um they decided that it would be a good situation to have a relationship so that turned into a very much a john and yoko oh. relationship in our band which was um extremely hard work for the rest of us so I, we respect what she did with the band but um it was certainly time that she moved on and we're certainly in a much better place now We've got five people now mm. working in the same direction rather than having two or three of us trying to pull other people along. Yeah. So one of the great videos is that you, you bullet belt was featured on the Deathgasm uh, soundtrack, right? That's, yeah, uh, that was, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so was the song written already or you wrote, you wrote it specifically for the movie? No, so the, the way the story goes on Deathgasm is um, Jason Lee Howden, who's the Deathgasm uh, director, yeah, and he wrote wrote the movie. So there was this competition in New Zealand called Make My Horror Movie. So the New Zealand Film Commission and some other kind of people had put some money together and they run a competition. So basically, you have to submit a one-page script and a movie poster to enter the competition and the judges choose who wins and they are given money to make a movie. So Jason had, had um, submitted the Deathgasm and, um, and he won. So I didn't, we didn't know him at all. So he sent a message just to our Facebook page that just said, hey guys, I've won this competition. I'm making this movie. It's, it's, the budget is not big. Um, I need some help with props. Have you got T-shirts, metal posters, blah, blah, blah. And, we're, and I was replied and said, absolutely. So, um, and we, we worked out that he lived in Wellington too. So we decided to meet up. So we met up and um, we got talking and he's kind of like me, same kind of interest, big metal head. And um, we just got talking and then we kind of said, he came to a conclusion. He asked if we'd like to write the theme song. So he sent me the script of the movie before it was made so i i kind of read the script and um based the song off that so we wrote the song about the movie before the movie was actually made 
Right. Just just reading the script and getting a general. So um, yeah, so that's how that kind of rolled. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty fun movie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and look, and I think somewhere along the line there will be a death gasm too. So he's 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 got a script together. So expect at some stage when he gets some funding and some support that you might see a death gasm too. And we're actually working with Jason very shortly. We're filming another video that he's going to produce one of our music videos, and we're going to make it really over the top and funny and gory and like really cool. Yeah. So uh, I also saw the post of uh, what you were watching this new series on uh, Amazon, right? Amazon uh, Prime. The The Boys. What is that about? Because I haven't actually come across that series. <laughs> uh, it's really really cool. I actually just um so so last night for the first time in a long time, my wife and my kids were away for the night, so I had the house to myself. Right, because I'm so busy, I never get to sit down and watch TV. Like it's very rare, and whenever we are, my kids are watching TV, so I never get to watch what I watch. So I just stumbled across it. So it's basically um, a series about um, superheroes who are who are seen by the public to be superheroes, but they're actually really nasty, narcissistic, bad people, and it's all funded by this massive corporation, mm. and it's all about. Um, social media and making money and just control and um so they sell it like these superheroes were chosen by god and born but you actually find out that they were injected with this um with this like serum that was made by the nazis to make people superhuman right <laughs> so it, it, yeah it's so yeah i won't give too much away but it's really awesome it's got a great kiwi actor called Carl Urban as the one of the main guys. And he actually played Judge Dredd. I don't know if you've seen Judge Dredd movie. Yes, yes. The good Judge Dredd movie, not the bad Sylvester Stallone one, but the, <laughs> the good one from about five years ago. So great Kiwi actor and it's really violent. I would compare it to like, um, shit, what's that? What's that superhero? Um, kick, have you seen the Kick-Ass movies? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so it's, it's that kind of vibe. It's like, over the top violent but it's also um, really funny lots of black humor and uh, great acting so yeah so i binge binge watch season one and i can't wait for season two now highly recommended <laughs> yeah so uh the situation yeah i think it's uh, what you said is like you know right now there's a lot of people talking on social media and then there's a lot of division, a lot of fighting, but I don't know. It's like, it's pretty chaotic in the world right now, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think we personally um, and for my family, I'm pretty thankful that, and lucky that we live where we do down the bottom of the world in a small country with great leadership and we've managed to get on it early. We're, we're under no illusion that we are, the virus is probably going to come back and it's going to get into the country again. So New Zealand is prepared for that. But, you know, when you look at the, the state of um, the USA and their terrible leadership and how many people are dying in the world, and it's just awful, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a very bad situation. Um, so anyway, uh, Steve, so uh, can you tell me about, so you have your new album, uh, Warlords, with a new uh, lineup, fresh lineup of, uh, uh, so can you tell me about uh, cre having, getting this uh, lineup and then uh, recording the Warlords album? Yeah, sure. So, um, so Jolene, who we mentioned before, she, she, she left the band and um, we were kind of like a little bit rudderless. We, we were, okay, we were like, okay, what are we going to do now? So um, we never really sit, we don't stop. We're, we're always moving forward. So we, we don't panic. We're like, okay, we can do this. So we, ha we had a friend um, who sings in a band in Christchurch and that's, a, that's the biggest city down in the South Island of New Zealand. And his name was Scott. So we knew that... Um, we could rely on him to kind of step in and help us out. But we knew long term, it was going to be really challenging to have someone that lived, you know, 400, 500 kilometers away. So we, we booked this tour of Japan mm. and, uh, and we, um, with Scott singing. So we toured Japan and we did um, 
we, we did some Australian shows with Sabat, um, who are a really cool um, Japanese band. Yeah, I see them. And, and we did a little seven inch, um, which was the Faster Than Death and the Voyager with Scott. And it was great and, and really, really um, cohesive lineup. So we got back from Japan and then Scott, Scott said, hey, look, guys, um, my wife is pregnant again. We're expecting another baby. This is baby number five. So my ability to be able to commit time to, um, to this band is now, um, you know, not so good. So we were like, okay, we understand. So we had actually tried out our current singer, Paul, initially when Jolene first left the band in 2017. Paul had auditioned. Paul even then had the best vocals out of anyone, like really strong vocalist. But he probably wasn't in a perfect place with the rest of his life, some things going on. So we decided to pass on that. And then when Scott stepped out in 2018, we were like, well, let's talk to Paul again and see how he's doing. And Paul was in a much better space. So we're like, okay, let's give this a try. So Paul came in and we decided to um, give it a try. So we, we booked some studio time for October, 2019. And we had like, nine months to write this album we're like okay we're not going to play live we've found for this band playing shows while trying to write a new album doesn't really work for us we needed to be super focused where we're not having to prepare to play shows we can just focus on writing and practicing new material and getting it where we want it so we started working on these songs and we had ross still in the band hmm. and ross fell off his um bike his push bike riding to work and he broke his elbow and it was his um strumming hand on his guitar so that like, bloody hell so it was like a three to four month recovery for him so all of a sudden it's myself tim on bass and josh who had joined in 2017 so the three of us just said hey let's just write these songs so ross was okay with that so we wrote nine or ten songs ross's elbow healed he started learning the songs to play for the album. He fell off his bike again on the way to work and broke his other elbow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we are two months out from recording this album and Ross is struggling to play the songs. And I think by then, mentally, he had left a little bit. So we just kept charging forward, trying to include him and encourage him and then we just he just got to the point where he said look i'm out i i can't i don't want to do this anymore so we're like hey it's okay we understand there's no drama there's no hard feelings it happens mm. so ross stepped out so then we had another month so we just got really tight it was actually quite nice recording uh as a four piece with one guitarist doing all guitar parts that way we could make sure it was really really tight all the rhythms were really locked in mm. rather than having two rhythms so we we recorded in october over over a week here in in wellington and we went for a much more organic sound this time we wanted to get away from a modern sound we didn't want any guitar amp replacements we didn't want any drum replacements we didn't want to put triggers and replacement sounds on the album we wanted it to sound like us playing really tight in our band room but sounding really good together so so there was a lot of playing it live and just getting it down and the vibe was really really good and we knew that we had good songs we had focused this time our focus was more to write great songs and go back more to the to the classic bands like wasp mm. or Metallica even you know early Metallica and stuff where the songs are a little bit shorter we're cutting away the fat we're focusing more on big choruses catchy choruses and really good parts and, and kind of trimming it down and yeah and and this is probably the first time I mean we're almost we're probably 10 months since we recorded the album normally when you listen to your album a year later you're like oh man I wish we'd done this this and this differently but I'm um, sorry, you're getting the sun there on me. Oh, yeah, that's probably better. Um, this time we're actually um, pretty happy still 10 months after recording on 
what we put down, which I think is a really good sign. And it seems to be getting a good response. People are connecting with the album, which is really cool. Yeah. So um, what are your, like, your, what are the songs that you're really proud of from this album? That's a good question. For me, my personal faves, um, I really like Herodian Kingdom, which was a little bit of a risk for us. It's a very different song for us. Uh, we definitely try not to be pigeonholed, to be a black thrash band or whatever you want to call it. We just want to be a metal band and we want to bring in all those influences that we've heard. So with Herodian Kingdom, the goal was to write this big epic and and to have there's acoustic guitar on there there's piano there's this really huge guitar solo which sounds like pink floyd <laughs> you know so I'm, i'm pretty proud of that song i think it came out really well um i really like flames of hell i think that's a real banger we've only played these songs once live we've only had that show but um it normally takes a few shows to see which songs really connect live who which songs the people really but certainly that one has been a lot of talk so probably those two are my current favorites i'm actually at the stage now where i'm trying not not to listen to the album because <laughs> i've just heard it too many times right and i still want to be a fan of my band so i just need to step away from listening because not only listening to it i'm also playing the songs at band practice two or three times a week so so i'm trying to give my ears some space from the album and then i'll come back to it again yeah yeah so um i see that uh, you know how do you how do you make time like you know you have to work you have to do the music and then practices shows plus you have a family you have kids so how do you tackle this you know how do you spend how do you spend time with your kids so what do you how do you manage all this <laughs> yeah look it's it's a juggle i mean i'm very lucky my job so i'm a swim coach so I work early in the morning. I coach competitive swimmers and triathletes and so on. Right. And then all during the day, I don't work. So I start work again about 3.30 p.m. And I work through to 7 or 8 at night, once again, coaching. Right. So during the day, I have a lot of time to um, do my administration work. And I also, um, I'm very, I do a lot of exercise. So I do, um, I do Ironman triathlons. Yes, yes. yes so yes. I'm always out training. So for me, um, one of the things I've, I've done in the last year and a half is I've, um, I've stopped drinking because I've found, I've found that, um, you know, I've just like you said, I've got so much on my plate and any spare time to me is committed to my children and my family. So I don't have time to be hungover anymore. Right. I don't have time to be laying on a Sunday going, oh, I need to be taking my children to the park and playing with them and so on. So I guess it's just making choices and it's just filling out my day. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm 49 now, so it's still a long way off, I hope. But as you get to your 40s, you can actually see that there's maybe a finish line <laughs> somewhere way off in the horizon. So you stop wasting your time doing crap that you don't need to crap and you stop wasting your time doing negative shit that you don't need to. So I try to spend my day doing positive things and um, I find it really works for me. But I, I'm, a, I'm very hyperactive and um, outgoing, so I can't sit still. So being busy really suits my personality anyway. So how many times have you, have you joined the Ironman? I've done, I've done seven full Ironman. So Ironman is a four-kilometer swim. 180 kilometer bike and then a marathon right so i'm going to start training soon the next the next iron man so i did march we hit so there's one iron man in new zealand every year so the next one is in march next year so i'm going to start training for that soon so yeah yeah so uh because i'm i'm quite uh, interested because i do a lot of i do i do a lot of these virtual runs virtual challenges uh you know, uh, I, I normally do about uh, 200 km every month, like running and well, that's awesome. I've seen, I've seen some of your medals up on social media. Yeah, that's really cool. And I'm, I'm really interested in that vir the virtual running that's all been going on on 
online. I think it's really cool. And anything like that that's encouraging people to keep active, particularly in a stressful time like the COVID situation, yeah. where people aren't allowed to work or they're, they're being locked up at home and so on, I think it's really important for mental health to be able to get out and do some exercise. So, yeah, I'm all for that. So, well done. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so what's coming up for Bullet Belt? Uh, what are the shows you're planning to do, uh, Steve? So we, we have um, booked a New Zealand tour. It's called uh, Warlords New Zealand Tour. So um, the first shows are in uh, three weeks. So we go down to the South Island. We do a triple header. So for shows in New Zealand, it really is Friday, Saturday. We can do Thursday some places. And occasionally we'll do a Sunday, like a matinee show. Playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is no it's a waste of time. No one will come. So it has to be the weekend. So our tour is kind of spread over a bunch of weekends. So we're doing South Island. Then we then um, up in the North Island, we have about 10 shows all around. Like I said, hitting small towns, small towns where bands don't go to towns that are going to get super excited about a metal show coming to town and all the metal people are going to come out and support because they don't get metal shows. So to them, it's like an international band coming through. So um, we, we normally find those shows are the most fun and the most enthusiastic and the most wild, crazy fans because um, they're so excited because it's something new. Um, and, we have something very special happening in Wellington in um, September. We have this thing called Impaler Fest. So we're doing our own festival here and we're doing it at a brewery, mm. which is here. And they are releasing a bullet belt beer called Impaler. Wow. So Impaler is the first song off Warlords. Yeah. So um, yeah, we're, we're doing Impaler Fest and they're releasing our beer in um, 440 mil cans. And um and that's really exciting for us. And I might break my year and a half no drinking and I'll have to have one can of Impaler when that comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Steve, can you tell me a little bit about what are the other bands like in, in New Zealand, like metal bands that, that, are, that uh, if, if, because I'm, you know, we, you're over there, like, you know, end of the world, so we don't really know about New Zealand that much. So what are the other bands uh, other than Bullet Belt? <laughs> a few. Yeah, well, to, to be honest, I would say the scene here in New Zealand is probably the strongest it's ever been. There are a lot of great bands and all. So in the, in the rock genre, we have a lot of bands like we have like Devil Skin, who are getting a little bit of international recognition and doing really great things. And then up in the thrash bands, we have um, like bands like Just One Fix, who are from Auckland, a really cool band. Um, I guess where New Zealand has got the best reputation internationally is, is in kind of the more extreme death um, and like war metal, like um, bands like um, Ulcerate, who you may have heard of, very technical um, band. They actually just played a show last night in Auckland. They're playing here next Saturday, so I'm really excited to see that. Um, there's a band called Vassifor who they're playing with, who... Um, they're on, um, sorry, I can't remember the label off the top of my head. Uh, and then we have like Diocletian and Heresiarch and bands like this who, have, who are quite well known in the kind of really extreme metal underground. Right. And there's also, um, particularly in where I'm from in Wellington, there's a really great um, scene of like um, DIY punk bands that put on a lot of cool shows and like hire out halls, mm. like old school and run their own shows really DIY and that's really cool and inspiring. So there's a whole bunch there. So really great scene, um, it's probably stronger than it's been. And, and the, I guess the beauty of the only positive of COVID is um, it's a really good time here to be seeing bands because we're not getting international bands through now, obviously. So it's a chance for New Zealand bands to shine and right. to go out and hopefully pull bigger crowds who are, who want to come and see live music who aren't going to get the internationals through because that's been the downside of the last five years um there has been a lot of international bands coming through new zealand we've had really good promoters bringing them here mostly grabbing them over from australia but the small downside to that is it kind of waters down the local shows a little bit so 
by not having an international kind of um, shows coming through, um, the real focus can be on New Zealand bands and it's a chance for them to really step up and hopefully play to some good crowds. Right. So, uh, Steve, any message to uh, people who listen to uh, Bullet Belt? <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's just a big thanks. I mean, to, to me, anyone that can take, in this day and age where there is just so much music to listen to, so this is my little sweetheart, Everly, say hello. Hi. Right, way you go, sweetheart. Right, so um, to me, anyone that will give my band 30 seconds to listen to a clip, or watch a video, we are extremely grateful too, because let's face it, when you and I were young, our, our handful of bands was here. Right. Now, <laughs> there are just so many bands to listen to and in the internet age. So um, we're just extremely grateful for anyone who takes the time to give it a listen, whether they like it or not. If someone gives it a listen and doesn't like it, that's fine and that's awesome too. We just appreciate anyone that's taken the time to check it out, whether it's a video or a, um, a song on Bandcamp or Spotify. So um, yeah, just always grateful. Because I'm a fan myself and, and I'm always um, trying to find new bands and find new music that excites me. <clears throat> so I know what it's like. So if someone could get excited by the music that, that we make, that makes me extremely proud and extremely happy. Yeah. So uh, anybody you want to shout out to? Um, shout out to the boys from Bastardizer, who are good <laughs> friends of yours, of course. And, and you've seen, um, shout out to the fans in, in, in your city. We'd love to come there. We have looked at doing, doing that kind of getting over there. And um, I presume there's, um, there's a scene and, and good and some bands. Yes. Yep. And um, yeah, just a shout out to, um, to all your supporters because uh, it's people like you that are helping keep, keep, it, keep the underground alive by the support people that anyone that does a zine or is doing what you're doing with these really cool podcasts or um, they have, you have my utmost respect because without people like you, okay, um, bet, you know, the bands aren't going to get known. So thank you so much. <laughs> so Thank, thanks, Steve, for doing this. Uh, it's, it's finally, it's nice to talk to you and uh, really enjoy your music. So keep, keep uh, doing, uh, you know, more music and then hopefully we can, uh, I can see you sometime live. <laughs> yeah, and, and when this whole shit storm of COVID disappears, you'll have to not just go to New Australia, you'll have to come to New Zealand and we can look after you and show you the most beautiful country in the world. <laughs> and you're also welcome in the Philippines. Hopefully we can do a show here. <laughs> yeah, we would, we would love to come there. I presume it's very, very hot. Yes, it's hot. Yes, hot and traffic. That's what we are famous for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. And great food. Yes. <laughs> so, Steve, have a great day. So, uh, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah, thanks, my friend. Appreciate it.